Hey guys, it's Anna from Kaiju Bite. So today I'm going to do my Star Wars Celebration rant and review. So, you know, I've been, this is my third Star Wars Celebration and I've, I've enjoyed, I've, I've always enjoyed them. Um, it, it's been a complete change from the first Star Wars Celebration that I have attended, which was Orlando in, I forgot what year, um, and I think 2000, I want to say 2016, 16, maybe, maybe 2016. Um, anyways, you know, I went to that one, I went to the Orlando one that was two years ago, and then of course Star Wars Celebration Chicago. When they announced it was in Chicago, I was kind of disappointed that I was hoping that they would actually pick Anaheim or Orlando so I can split time and go to, go to Disneyland or Disney World, depending on what they picked. And it being in Chicago kind of was like, it was just kind of a, like a planning situation that I was kind of like thrown in the loop for, you know, like, I've never been to, um, well, I mean, I have been to Disneyland, but it was when I was a child, but it, it you know, I still knew the area, I had friends that knew the area, so planning was a little bit more easier for Anaheim when we were supposed to go when it was in Anaheim. But regardless, I was just thrown by the location. Um, but anyways, we booked our hotel. We actually booked it before the con actually had an official con rate because I just didn't want to risk, um, you know, not having a decent hotel space. So we booked at the Hyatt Regency. And the Hyatt Regency is actually connected to the, um, the convention center. And I had no, no problems with the hotel. The hotel was great. The staff was great. The staff was actually very even though I don't think it was ever an official con hotel, I don't think they ever had a... I think they sold out from people like me who didn't waste time, who didn't wait for the convention to have a hotel block. So even though they weren't an official con, uh, like had an official con rate, they still... They, they had Star Wars shirts on. They really did cater to the, to the con goers. So that, you know, I really did appreciate that. Um, they were definitely really, really excited to have us there, which makes your, you know, it does, it may, does make a difference. Like a few years ago, I went when I went to Awesome Con, the Marriott Marquis was complete jerks to all of the Awesome Con attendees, and it was awful. You know, it's like, my, why is my money not good enough for, for you just because we're not booking the majority of the hotel? But anyways, that's that's a different different thing but I did appreciate how that they went they they were the staff was all like very very super super into the con and, and ha was having a lot of fun um so about the convention itself so the convention is being hosted by Reed Pop and Reed Pop is all is known to host conventions like New York Comic Con C2E2 I think it's called Emerald City Comic Con out in Seattle um, so they host big conventions. They know how to do it. They always fail at Star Wars Celebration. No, I shouldn't say always fail, but the past two Star Wars Celebrations, they've been kind of lax the days of gold. The Celebration Orlando, they were complete failures at. Um, I don't, I've, you know, considering a big convention it is and how much, how big, I mean, New York Comic Con is a huge convention. They seem to have dropped the ball on Star Wars Celebration. Now, there are things that they did well at for Star Wars Chicago. They, I think they kind of learned from some of the mistakes that, they, that, that happened previously. Um, like, they, they completely changed how they did the seating. So you didn't have um, the overnight lines, um, which in Chicago I probably would have not because it was freezing. It was like 50 degrees. I mean, actually, some nights it was like in the 30s. Um, and plus, like, Sunday morning, like, it started to sleet and snow. So it, definitely not, like, definitely not, like, how you're going to be overnight in, in Orlando. But the lottery system, so the lottery system worked to an certain extent. It was a good idea, but the execution could have been better. So apparently... You know, you're, you're supposed to enter the lottery, but the the instructions weren't very clear. So I didn't realize, and it, like some of my friends also didn't realize that, hey, I bought two badges. I'm supposed to enter them as a group. 
So, cause I just, I registered the first badge, entered the lottery under that badge. I took my fiance's badge, registered for that. I didn't realize that I was supposed to do a group so that, that we both could get in together. Mind you, we only won. Oh, and that was the other thing. We only got one notification for one of the badges. I got, I ended up getting the episode nine panel, which I didn't go to. I ended up giving it to a friend, but we never got a notification for the other badge. And like my one friend was like, well, you just have to log into your, your account. And I'm like, well, I never, I never did a password. It never asked me for a password or anything. So I was like, well, how am I supposed to go into my account that I did not create when I, before I set up the, the lottery system? So it was like, it was things like that. If I had known, you know, it seems like the information on like certain things like that were very, very kind of just like not really well well put like well thought of i've i've like saw other people ask the same questions like well my badge i bought the badge does that mean my friends get to go with me like it was very unclear um that you were supposed to register as a group and then you all have like a qr a separate qr code um and you know it was so it was like on the plus side, it did it did do well. Like I did like the lottery system, but it, it just needs some refinement. Um, the app was, when it wanted to work, was actually decent, decent, I say. Cause like, it should like have a way that you can just like, some of it, it didn't seem like it was finished. Like it seemed like it was, they kind of just half, half asked it and just launched it because they're running out of time. And so there was like some parts of it that like I would try and do and it would just bring you back to the website. I'm like, well, if I want to go to the website, I would just go to the website um, and not have it like in app form. And like, I should think they should, could have put like the autograph thing, like the whole autograph uh, schedule in the app. It did like how you, if you had your um, autographs, it did put it in your, um, did put it in your schedule. So that was kind of cool. Um, and the light speed lane, so I, like, it was, it was funny, because, like, the Thursday I went into the Galaxy's Edge, uh, they had a whole display of, of Galaxy's Edge at the, at the celebra- at Celebration, and someone in, behind me joked, oh, we need a fast pass line, and then we, like, five, like, five seconds later, someone, like, pulls up and was, like, ding, and they were cut in front, and we're, like, is there really a fast pass? And there kind of was, they called it the light speed lane. And in theory, how it was supposed to work was that you can go into the app, you can go into your, like, my benefits and hit priority something, I forgot what, what, what exactly, and then you hit light speed lane. And then you get to pick what, um, you know, the, the panels or, or the, the displays or whatever that had the light speed lane. And you click it and you reserve your time or whatever. It did not work like Saturday the whole thing was just it would crash it kept crashing the app so all day Saturday wasn't working Sunday when I went to I didn't know I didn't access it on Sunday I think I gave up um, and I think also Sunday we were kind of not doing much but on Monday when I tried it because I was like well I wanted to go in the Galaxy's Edge thing again to look at some of the more pro products it it pulled up, it went a f step further than it had a few days ago, but it, then it wouldn't give me any options. It just said days and then didn't give any options. So it was just like, okay. So, but in theory, it was kind of a cool idea, but I never was able to get it to work. Um, but um, the, what kind of was annoying was that Sarah Celebration released on their Facebook this huge thing that says, Lotteries are not transferable. We are checking IDs. And it was kind of a lie. They never checked any IDs. As long as you had the QR code, you were fine. And I don't really like how it, it was kind of a threat. Like, you know, like, if you're going to fall, like, one, are you really going to check, like, 5,000 IDs? That's going to take even more time at the convention and you're never going to get your panel started on time. And secondly, it's like, why even make that threat when you're not even going to follow through with it? Like, no one checked IDs. All four days, like, all the major panels, no, nobody checked an, an ID. 
So it's like if you if you had just had a better setup for your lotteries and so then allowed people to exchange them because like sometimes your schedule doesn't allow it. Like like I couldn't use my episode nine because I actually had a I had another engagement. And they also said they weren't letting people in costumes. I was like, well, I'm not going to go into my, go to the episode nine panel in my snow trooper costume, especially when they said no costumes. But when I did the galaxy's edge panel, there were people in full costumes, like, like armored costumes, like snow troopers. And like, I, there was a Boba Fett there, you know? So it's just like, well, it's like the inconsistencies of, of, of like everything that was kind of annoying at the, um, for celebration. It's like, they did some things right, but then some things are just like, kind of like, why'd you do that? Seriously. Um, location. I wasn't a big fan of Chicago when I heard it announced, like I said, mentioned, but it, it was, had its pluses and it had its minuses. So I did like how all of the hotel, well not all of the, like the main hotels were connected. Like if I really did not want to go outside, I really could have not gone outside. Um, the Hyatt was connected, from what I heard, the Marriott was connected, and I've heard some of the, like the Hilton, I'm not sure if it's like Home, Home to Suites and stuff like that, those were all connected. And, uh, you know, especially because it was kind of chilly at Chicago, and that was another thing, like Chicago in April, man, it was like freaking cold you know, and I, I'm like, Orlando wouldn't have done this to us. Anaheim wouldn't have done this to us. It was snowing on Sunday, which was kind of amusing because for the Blizzard Force detachment, the snow troopers, they got to have snow in their photo shoot, which sucked for me because I was taking the photos and I was like, I'm so cold. I have no gloves, you know, but, uh, and like a lot of people were really concerned about the safety and because Chicago is I mean, I think they're still kind of ranked top really high with the amount of shooting deaths in the United States. There was no time that I felt not safe at the convention center or in the surrounding. Mind you, I didn't really go out at night very much. Uh, we went to dinner a few times, but it, we stayed locally. But on the flip side, the location. So this part of Chicago is like, uh, it, it's not near the heart of Chicago. so. Like if I wanted to go do something touristy, I had to take like a $20 Uber ride north, 20 minutes north to get to like the touristy part of Chicago that had the better restaurants that had like the tourist stuff. And I'm like, that adds up, you know, like I'm trying to just go get deep dish pizza and I'm spending like $30, $15 each way, you know, on top of our food. And it's just like, it, it was expensive. Like if you look at my my banking statement, it's like Uber, Uber, Lyft, Uber, Lyft, Uber, you know, just because like we wanted to do tourist stuff. We just didn't want to just do the convention, but it, it, it added up, you know, and Uber also annoyed me a little bit because I added my gift card that I got, but then it ended up taking it out. And of course I didn't have, but that's Uber. That's not anything, the celebration. Um, so this a few things that they did well. Um, Celebration Orlando two years ago, the photo op and the autograph line were a complete disaster. It was like we like it was there was no organization. It felt like just complete mad chaos. Um, and we, there were some lines that were waiting like like pretty much hours. There were people complaining that they paid all this money and then and then the actors are just gone because, you know, like they need breaks too, but like they didn't get their autographs, you know, and it was crazy. Tops, I think, was the same company. They, I don't think they, you know, it, there's still going to be hiccups, but it was night and day. Um, they did a much better job. They, um, there was a little bit more organization, a little bit more space. There was still a little, like, some things that I think they could have done better, like, you know, like, have maybe another entry point, because they had all of this space, like, all these actors, but only one entryway to get into it and I think they could have maybe had two entryways to so that like the, the actors that are on that side the far left side you wouldn't have to go all the way down um to to do we only did one photo op which was in McDermott and um Hayden Christensen and considering and that was also kind of confusing because they end up putting us in the Ahmed Best line and so they're like oh Ahmed Best and we we're like we're we're here for Hayden Christensen and 
A. McDermott, they're like, oh, you're in the wrong line, go that way, you know, but I'm thankfully that we didn't miss our photo op. Um, and um, so yeah, the better layout was nice. The celebration store. Now the first day, apparently the, the computer systems went down. So like a few of my friends said they, they were in the line for four hours, um, which last celebration I had friends that were in line to get into the store for four hours and then spent another hour to two hours just trying to get checked out. When we went Saturday, mind you Saturday is usually the biggest, the busiest day of, of any convention, we waited in line for 30 minutes and we ch we got checked out and I mean we spent like probably an hour shopping and then we we check out, we got checked out in 15 minutes. So definitely a much, much better improvement than Celebration Orlando. Um, I felt like also the vendors, there was like, instead of just having like rows upon rows upon rows of just like generic like toy vendors, they seem to have a little bit more of a mix this time. Um, and I think they also kind of had, had them a little bit more spread out. I felt like like the big, like the really, really, the, the vendors that cost a lot of the line drama um, they had them spread out more. So it wasn't like Hasbro and Funko right on top of each other and the lines are just going crazy. I felt like they had, like Hasbro was, I don't really remember where Hasbro, like Hasbro was like I think right there and like Funko was like over there. And then like her universe did cause a little bit of, because it was close to the stage, but their line I felt like I thought I was going to be in that line for an hour. I was in that line for 15 minutes. Um, and, you know, so I think, I think they utilize the space much better, this celebration. Um, and, you know, like, I, when I was grumpy Friday, I was like, I'm never going to go back to celebration unless it's at, you know, Orlando or Anaheim. And of course they released that it's in Anaheim in 2020. They have not released the dates yet, but I'm hoping, I'm, I hope it's summertime. Um, because that's when I, we were planning to go to Disneyland anyway, so I want to, you know, have a dual purpose trip, you know, Disneyland during the week and then celebration for the weekend. But we'll see. Um, I, you know, it is a, like, I don't go just for vendors or panels. For me, it's like a way of, visit, like, meeting, like, just new Star Wars friends, you know, and, like, people I know from, from the 501st, the Mandalorian Mercs, the Rebel Legion, and you know some of the other fan group communities and do swag trades and just and do the Wilbro hood run and just have fun so I mean they definitely did better than Orlando two years ago um, there have been some rumors that Reed Pop was not going to do it again um, but I don't know how you know if those are rumors or if Disney will actually kind of take it over and run it kind of like how they do D23 so we'll see I don't know Anaheim 2020 here we go <laughs> we'll see how it is but until next time i'll talk to you guys later bye